starting right now on This Week with George Stephanopoulos. Collision Course. The world is in trouble, but we're going to straighten it out. Over nine, another legal blow to Trump's travel ban. Are we headed for a Supreme Court showdown? We're one on one with Vice President Mike Pence. And the American people elected a man of action. Facing tough questions about those Trump tweets slamming a federal judge. This is a judge who was nominated by President Bush, 99 to nothing, confirmed. How is he a so called judge? Those ominous threats on Iran. Iran is on notice. What does that mean exactly? It means we're watching. And with the Supreme Court in the spotlight. I don't know how anybody can oppose it, frankly. Leading senators weigh in on Trump's pick to fill that critical tie-breaking seat. Republican Ben Sass, Democrat Amy Klobuchar, a fast-paced week, heading for a furious finale. From ABC News, it's This Week. Here now, Chief Anchor George Stephanopoulos. And we come on the air this week with breaking news. Early this morning, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals denied the Trump administration's latest move to keep his travel ban in place. That means travelers from those seven majority Muslim countries still free to come to America, just as they were before the president issued the executive order struck down by a federal judge in Seattle late Friday night. All through Saturday, there were joyful reunions at airports. But from the winter White House Mar-a-Lago, the president let loose on Twitter calling the federal judge who blocked his ban a so-called judge. Later Saturday, he promised to fight. So far, the court's rulings have gone against the White House. And as this tussle between the president and the courts played out, I met with Vice President Mike Pence at the historic Congress Hall in Philadelphia, just steps away from where our Constitution was drafted. The president is vowing to overturn that order. This morning, he called it a ridiculous order from a so-called judge. So-called judge, is it appropriate for the president to be questioning the legitimacy of a federal judge in that way? Through the course of the campaign and in the early days of this administration, President Trump's made it clear that our administration is going to put the safety and security of the American people first. And the executive order that he put into effect, which suspends immigration from seven countries that have been compromised by terrorism and don't have the kind of internal systems that we can be certain the people that are applying to come to this country are who they say they are, it was legal, it was appropriate, and our administration is going to be using all legal means at our disposal to challenge the judge's that, order. I understand that, but is, is, is it right for the president to say so-called judge? Doesn't that undermine the separation of powers and the Constitution written right next door? Well, I, I, I don't think it does. I think the American people are very accustomed to this president speaking his mind and speaking very straight with them, and it's very frustrating. When, when scholars on the left and the right, people as distinguished as Jonathan Turley of George Washington University have said, while he doesn't agree with the executive order, he recognizes the president has the full authority to put the security of the homeland first in determining who comes into right, this, this country. Judge but was to appointed. see a judge actually suspend that order across but, the country, so George, is frustrating judge, all of us. This is a judge who was nominated by President Bush, 99 to nothing, confirmed. How is he a so-called judge? Well, again, there's, there's simply no question under the Constitution and, frankly, under federal law that the President of the United States has the authority in the interest of national security to determine who has the right to come into this country. Uh, and, and we're going to challenge the judge's order on that basis because the, the reality is we face a dangerous enemy and the President is determined to use the authority that he has under the Constitution and under the law, but we'll work but through the courts to challenge But doesn't this judge have the authority them. to do what he did as well? He certainly does, and that's why the administration is complying with that order as we speak. And we'll go through the process in the courts to get a stay of that order so that, again, we can implement uh, this action that is, is entirely focused on the safety and security of the American people. Look, we've got to do things differently. And the Obama administration and the last Congress identified these seven countries repeatedly as seven countries that have been compromised by terrorism. And so by putting a pause in, as Secretary Kelly described it accurately, putting a pause in for all these countries except Syria and beginning to identify ways that we can ensure that anyone that's coming here uh, is, is, doesn't represent a threat to our families and our communities, there, what the American people expect. There's been a chorus of criticism, though, of this ban, as, as you know, from other courts, from our allies like Theresa May, the French president, from Republicans 
in Congress. When you look at, at how this was done, do you take, any, take away any lessons, concede it could have been done better, drafted better? I think the early days of this administration are going to be described in the history books as days of action. <laughs> and the American people welcome the decisiveness that President Trump has shown on this issue, putting the safety and security of the American people above the niceties of communicating with people in Washington or in some cases around the world. He acted. He put the safety of the American people first. And I think this, that's the kind of leadership the American people want to see. Definitely some support. So a lot of resistance you've seen crop up as well. But I want to move on because uh, the Democratic leader in the Senate has weighed in on this uh, this morning uh, as well. He's responding to the president's tweet this morning saying, with each action testing the Constitution and each personal attack uh, on, on judges, President Trump raises the bar even higher for Judge Gorsuch's nomination to serve on the Supreme Court. You think it's going to have an impact? Probably, you know, the, I look at the first few days of this administration, and I love to tell people to watch this president at work sitting behind that resolute desk in the Oval Office. You see a president who's in the promise-keeping business. And in my view, chief among those promises was his commitment to nominate someone to the Supreme Court who will be faithful to the Constitution, interpret the law as written, but he also said he wanted someone who was exceptionally qualified. And Judge Neil Gorsuch with his academic background, with 10 years on the court, as someone who was unanimously confirmed by the United States Senate 10 years ago to the Court of Appeals in the Tenth Circuit, I think represents uh, that promise kept to the American people. And we remain very confident uh, that despite uh, some of the posturing that we see in the Senate today, uh, that Judge Gorsuch is, is going to be well received by members of the Senate. And, I, and I'll promise you, one way or the other, he's going to get an up or down vote on the floor of the Senate. Whether it takes the nuclear option or not. President, President Trump also promised a pro-life justice. Uh, Judge Gorsuch has never ruled directly on Roe v. Wade. Are you confident that he would vote to overturn Roe v. Wade on the court? You know, as, as someone who, like the president, cherishes the sanctity of life, it, that's an important issue to me, as it is for millions of Americans. But in this deliberation, and I was honored to be a part of the process. You the spoke pro with the judge, right? I did. And the president, uh, the president asked me to be a part of a small group that interviewed all the finalists for this decision. But what the president directed us to look for was someone who would be faithful to the Constitution, who would simply apply the law as written, who would have the character, the temperament, uh, and the courage uh, that the American people want to see. Did you ask him directly Court. about Roe v. Wade? I did not. And I, I, you know, what, what, what the president charged us to do was to find someone who had the background, the experience, the unimpeachable credentials, the character, but also just to be faithful to the Constitution as written. We're in this hallowed hall where the Congress met in 1790. We're right next door to Independence Hall where the Constitution was written. Um, that and the framework of this government have created the greatest a quality of life in the history of mankind. And I'm confident that in Judge Neil Gorsuch, we'll have someone on the court who'll keep faith with the Constitution. President Trump decided this week to let stand President Obama's executive order on LGBT rights. And it prompted this question from a prominent social conservative, Bob Vanderplatz. He said, our base is wondering why Obama's executive order is allowed to stand. What's the answer? I think throughout the campaign, President Trump uh, made it clear that, that discrimination would have no place uh, in our administration. I mean, he was the very first Republican nominee to mention the LGBTQ community uh, at our Republican National Convention and was applauded for it. And, and I was there applauding with him. I think the generosity of his spirit, it, recognizing that, that in, in the patriot's heart there's no room for prejudice, uh, is, is part of who this president is. But I also think that the speech that he gave this week at the National Prayer Breakfast, reiterating his commitment to repeal the Johnson Amendment, that's put a chilling effect uh, on free speech in religious institutions around the country, and his reiterated commitment to religious liberty are all a part of the kind of leadership that Do you think a new executive order is president necessary Trump. on religious liberty or is current law sufficient? Well, the president's made it clear that he wants to take action on the Johnson Amendment. Back in the 1950s, the Congress passed a law that essentially threatened the tax-exempt status of churches and synagogues and, and religious institutions if they were seen to be involved in political expression. Uh, I have to tell you, I don't, I don't think we'd have ever made it to these hallowed halls 
back in 1790 if the, if the pulpits of this country had been silenced from speaking about what they thought was right and wrong. And the president provided real leadership in the campaign where he identified the Johnson Amendment and he told people of faith of every background across this country that he would work to repeal it. And he's directed the administration to begin to look at ways, both legislatively and through executive action, to do that. But no executive orders beyond that, beyond the John, fixing the Johnson Amendment, in your view? Well, I think that'll be the purview of the president to determine whether any of that's necessary. But, um, but I, I will tell you for our part, uh, the focus of this administration will continue to be to have a safer America, to have a more prosperous America, and to continue to advance the president's agenda, both on Capitol Hill and through executive action, and carry that message all across the country.